I have a, a few questions. I want to follow up first uh, with Ms. Coyne. On, there were some Dodd-Frank questions as well. And uh, Do you have a, a guesstimate uh, in, in uh, your bank how many folks are engaged in compliance efforts or regulatory stuff out of your, your total workforce? I, I couldn't give you a percentage off the top of my head, but I, I can definitely assuredly tell you that the ranks have grown and um, the, the number of folks we have in, in compliance and risk management overall have, have probably doubled over the last, you know, three to five years. Um, the other thing I would add about Dodd-Frank is there are still some unknowns which may ultimately impact lending in the small business area because the rules haven't yet been defined on how we're going to have to collect certain information and so forth. So it, it may be too soon, actually, to say how some of this is going to play out. But um, there certainly have been lots of resources devoted to, to compliance. Well, doubled in the last three to five years. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and if I understand, uh, I think uh, your bank uh, combined employees probably in more, employing more folks than every bank and credit union and other financial service company in my entire congressional district. Mm -hmm. it, it's very big. How, how many employees do you all have? 15,000 15, in Keycorp. And when you were testifying earlier about the impact of Dodd-Frank and how that was impacting your ability to uh, uh, continue to uh, uh, loan money to small businesses, it was a different story than I was hearing from my small banks, my, mm -hmm. my community banks, credit unions, just an enormous effort of compliance. And I haven't heard about doubling, uh, but, uh, but in terms of that effort, just making it extremely difficult, in many cases, established customers not able to continue uh, can, uh, like Mr. Falk indicated, practices that have been working, they're current on their loans and coming in and unable to continue that. Even though the banker would like to do that, the examiner says, too bad. And, and so, yeah, that's a lot of capital uh, to loan, uh, thanks to the Federal Reserve, but uh, the ability to get it out the front door is, uh, seems extremely limited. So I appreciate that. But, but Dr. Krosner, a uh, follow-up on, on the Federal Reserve, and uh, we've seen an enormous increase in the money supply uh, since 2008. Uh, I didn't see any information in your testimony. Uh, what do you expect will happen with that? Because uh, I'm particularly troubled by that, that this is an unprecedented increase and we still have a, well, the economy went backwards last quarter. I wonder if you could uh, shed some light on that. Sure, I'd be delighted to. So the, um, uh, the size of the Federal Reserve's balance sheet has grown dramatically, more than tripling, and um, it may uh, or it's likely to grow even further as they continue to uh, to, to buy more uh, more assets. Now that has led to a, a large increase in the amount of reserves that uh, are on banks' balance sheets, and Key Corp and many others have a lot of um, excess reserves that they are hoping, I, I would assume, hoping to lend out, uh, and uh, and at some point will be be lending out. But fortunately, that has not led to a very large increase in the money supply or inflation, uh, because people are. Uh, both individuals holding a bit more cash and firms holding a lot of the excess reserves. The key question is going to be, will the Federal Reserve be able to make sure that in the transition that these excess reserves don't turn into very high money growth and high inflation down the line? Right now, we're not seeing evidence of that. Uh, the inflation rate has been quite tame over the last few years, despite the very large growth in the, um, uh, the reserves and uh, the, uh, the balance sheet of the, of the Federal Reserve. Uh, the um, um, expectations of where inflation is likely to go, both consumer, uh, individual consumer-based surveys, professional forecasters, and market-based have not suggested high inflation is, uh, is expected. But I think it's very important to keep a uh, laser focus on that to make sure we don't get into a high inflation environment. And I appreciate that. And, and hopefully, as was indicated, the measures don't capture everything uh, in that inflation rate. Uh, but... Uh, you know, this is really unprecedented, a uh, monetary policy like we have with actually no economic result or very little coming out at the same time, and, and so unprecedented in a couple of accounts. One other thing with Mr. Falk, I appreciate you being here as a, as a real-life owner of a, of a small business. So the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco put out a study in the last few days, I think it was, that said concerns over taxes, regulations, and the President's health care plan were not having a measurable impact on hiring. Uh, would you agree in, uh, with, with that study coming out of the, the Federal Reserve in San Francisco? Uh, I think that can be answered in a couple different ways. Uh, it does not impact me hiring currently from my locations. I have a minimum staffing requirement. I mean, I, I can't reduce my staff. However, it does impact me in making a decision to open up new locations, therefore affecting hiring in the long term. 
like I said, every location I open on average employs eight to 10 people. Mm-hmm. I, am, I, I have four agreements, open franchise agreements, that I would open tomorrow if I had access to capital and if I didn't have the decision process of how these regulations are affecting me and whether I even want to open them in the first place. And so if I could open those four, I could employ 50 more people immediately. Okay. Thank you. I yield back. 